Welcome to a new Rainbow Cast with me, Artistically Hour. You can be able to watch it, listen to it, and read it. Whether that's watching it on YouTube or on a new Rainbow Project YouTube channel and Facebook page, or you can listen to it by finding a new Rainbow Cast with Artistically Hour podcast feed on your favourite podcasting platforms. Read it on www.newrainbowproject.com. Dot com. If you want to get in touch with the podcast and follow the channel, go at New Rainbow Project on various social media channels. You can find the best bits of the interviews and random bits and bobs on Instagram, on TikTok, and Facebook. Let's get into the interview with her. Uh... My name is Kayla. I am a disability just advocate for six years. I am the creator of Black Artistic Pride, which is celebrated being Black and Artistic, and just discussed about intersectionality. And I have a um, community on GB by app called No Diversity and Black to discuss about intersectionality within No Diversity, to do live discussion group sessions based on intersectionality and talk about what I be artists or talk about other issues and also working on our biases as well. Uh, I'll start by your own personal story about how you discovered you are autistic. For, I guess for me, just being autistic, since I've been autistic since I was two years old, so it's the journey, except my own disability, it, it took a long time to understand myself because I thought I learned about my disability at 10 by my mom, but then, of course, you go your teenage years, the you have some internalized ableism and not liking yourself along the way until I expose myself to the artist community online, especially on Twitter, which is now X. And that when I learned about disability rights and autism rights. And that when I came at activist and started to spread awareness about autism because I didn't know that my disability is having people be missing. I try to change the narrative. And also let me talk about intersectionality and spreading and make sure that everybody in the autistic community for her, especially who black and not black and brown autistic people, women who are autistic and everybody who not privileged. So I'll make sure, even though my focus is on especially black autistic people, because that's what my expertise is because I'm black and autistic. Make sure our voice is heard because you can't hear one perspective that that do not represent everybody. So we had to make sure that everybody feel heard in the community. But you can't change people better though yeah. who are the face of the movement. So you gotta uh, do what you have to do. As you said, you were diagnosed but did you say you were diagnosed at the age of the two? Okay, yeah. so what was it that was noticed at a young age as your autistic traits? What was it like the only thing finding out at the age of ten? When I thought I learned about my autism, at first, at the time, little kid yourself, I always do some research on autism and what it about. Most of this would like to be autistic. And I know this, they talk about girls and autism because I look that up because I like to be a girl who autistic. But then when I go Pacific, to me, it's no information because back then, they ain't did no research about the Black autism experience that much. First, I thought I learned about my own disability. I'm like, not shame of it at first, but then, of course, along the way, that when I got the real internalized able, and in which I don't have one, which it took me a long time to unlearn because we live in an able society. What was the key traits and those things that affected you from the young age? At the age of 10, when you found out, what was the things that you noticed that were you being autistic? What I noticed, even before I found out I was autistic, I know a simple thing. I used to go to speech therapy growing up. I go on that until I graduate from high school. And I'm cool going with these programs that for disabled people. And I do have people who work with me, work on my own life skills, anything like that. At first, I don't know why. Until now, after learning at 10 and afterward, then I learned that they responsibility to help me to go through this world, how to support yourself and have a disability. At first, I didn't know what going on, but I know the differences. Even before I found out that I was being told that I'm autistic, and that when I learned about it, and of course, that when I know there's differences about me, but I don't know why at the beginning. 
especially going to my special education class, best in elementary school and middle school. But I never know why till I know after the fact why until yeah. because people judge me because I have a disability. What were the things that you said was different at age when knowing that you are autistic? I do you tell what were the things that you were interested to learn about? What the questions you had and what the things you learned through your own research? I had to think on that one. But the special means of being autistic, sometimes I had to max my autistic trait because you're taught by others that, oh, don't let autism define you. This is what you have. It do not define you. And I think that kind of led me to why I developed the internalized ableism. Because to be extinguishable, to be like everybody else, be normal. But I realized years later, what is normal? And I sometimes grew up hearing myself like something wrong with me. I feel like you're strange. Why you can't relate to people? Why no one gets you? Why you don't have the same trait as those around your age? Like I remember growing up, I had to blend in the crowd so I don't so I don't be excluded. But of course, some part of my life I did be excluded, whether it be in my advocacy work or people who look like me who may not understand what autism is. Some of them have like surface level of what autism is like. Oh, you quote, they use a functioning level. Like, oh, you high function or you low function. Or they just, or what they say on TV, typical autism, they put you in a bottle like, oh, you good at math. Oh, that autism people good at STEM. No, but for me, yes, I'm good with math, but I'm not a mathematician. It's a hell no. But even though I'm a county finance major, which is strange, <laughs> but I'm not a mathematician. And I think like people put autistic people in a box and based on what they assume about us. So I think they need to unlearn that not every autistic people is the same. For anyone that may not understand or know much about it, but what, what do you see as your own experience of internalized? What were the things that you masked and what the things you worked on over the years to unmask? I imagine just like so your autistic trait. And, but then there are times that I still had to mask because living to say that you had to be this particular way. But also to bring the fact that not everybody could unmask like they want to, especially someone who looked like me, especially who black and autistic or any other intersectionality. We cannot unmask like we want to. If we do unmask, we unaliable be harmed if we do it because and especially with the campaign about unmasked, like, I do agree that we do need to be ourselves, but then there's some barriers to it. Not everybody has the same privilege as those who, you know, who white and all that stuff. And that's why I think it trick. And yes, we want to be ourselves. We might imagine in the, in the safe place with people who know us, right? Maybe in our home and in our room, but... In the public space, we cannot, man, like we want to, especially if you like black and brown. We cannot do that. Or oh, especially if you're high support artist, but you can't do that. But I can't speak on what it's like to be a high support artist person, but that when thing get a little tricky, like how safe you are, because due to the size that we live in. What does, well, when you are able to unmask, what, and be your authentic artistic self, and as you said, that... If you're at home in your own space, you have the ability to have this, this safe space to unmask. When you feel safe enough, what does unmasking look like? What are the things that you want to be able to be masked? And what, what are the specific things that you feel are different within yourself and that help them might notice yourself masking and what are the things that people might notice if you're unmasked, if you get what I mean? I do a mask if I'm in my own place. Like, I like to dance. I like to sing. And mostly dancing and jumping around, stuff like that, which kind of made me happy. But of course, you can't do it in public, but I had to use my headphone to play with some. And I know like every artist person, maybe how they are mad may be different from mine. But for me, I like music. That was my stem. And it's just, I know some artistic people, they like bring their toy or some they flap their hands. Some just, it's different things for different people. 
And but for me, it's just music and stemming and dancing and singing that I like to do in, in my own comfort or doing around people who know me. But at the same time, I had to mask because you know, live inside of that not accessible to you. You had to especially I have a job and basically working in retail we, that you cannot unmask like you want to. You had to be the particular way so that. Court people think you're strange. Like, oh, that person's strange. They'll never know why you do things. Do so then mass it can lead me to burn out if I don't use it correctly. Well, there's like a distinction between how what it means for a black person to a white person and masking because there's certain place environments that, as you talk about intersectionality, important to recognize. Like how there is that white privilege of not white. White autistic people might be more safe to unmask as black autistic person. And especially like in the States, when the environment concerns you about the police in society large. So what does that look like for yourself? What what are your personal fears and anxieties and concerns about not being able to unmask? And what are the reasons why you feel you have to still mask in certain scenarios? today especially the unmasking part not every artistic person had the privilege though what you be seeing on tv and research that like that because we don't have the same experience we don't have the same oppression like everybody else because some people in our community had to deal with islamophobia anti-semitism or any other oppression they had to deal with because this other layer other than dealing with ableism all the or anti-autism because they had to deal with more of a thing at one time because due to a cultural difference and whether you be black or brown or just or being a woman or anything else something we could do we can but they uh, if they they might put it at way because due to society and knowing what is normal and stuff like that it just it's very frustrating. Some people who have the most privilege not not realizing why some people in our communities like me had to create spaces so we feel seeing her who could talk about this complex issue because they could join, they could learn about experience, but they had to not to not to center themselves. Because a lot of times, especially like um masking and other is it's tend to be from the white artistic perspective with privilege and they're not realizing that their peers who are not them don't have the same privilege and don't have the same access and we should ask them. It could be why that basically though in the community don't have and also there are a lot of a debate between awareness and acceptance. And for those who privilege they say, oh really we got we need all to accept them, but then there's some part of our community who find they late diagnosed or some find out. Some of them, like, in that community who mostly black, brown, women, they like that, they're still in the wedding face. It's like a mixture of inside baby because what, why, that's why I keep saying we need autism, we need autism awareness and acceptance because, yeah, we need to work on the awareness first because not everybody aware about autism is. And maybe along the way, it might lead to accept right now. We a mixture of both, but lean toward awareness side instead of acceptance side because not everybody in acceptance i understand what i mean because best from how you like perceive autism acceptance if you look at the intersectionality certain people as you said those with low support needs were like done for more privileged class backgrounds or more destinations where diagnosis is more accessible where you got support i assume that when you say about autism awareness, needs to be able to have that platform to answer what autism looks like in the diverse people because there's over 100 million of autistic people in the world. It's getting diverse representation of what different autistic people look like and being able to relate to that. Since this is Autism Acceptance Month, what have you found from the content that has been produced for Autism Awareness and Acceptance Month and the stuff you've seen online or in the media about it. Especially for this month, I think for too long that the narrative is still the same. Oh, like a suffer level of autism. But I've been seeing for people who I've been following on social media, we always keep like having the same conversation again. It's always the same narrative. 
every year. Oh, we need definition of autism, what autism is, a basic knowledge of what autism is. We need to go beyond that. Talk about complex reality, learn from different perspective, like intersectionality, how people differ from one another. And I think especially with autism, it's no one know about autism. And that's why it's so hard to get to a autism acceptance because not many know about autism. They, we still in the awareness phase and not everybody accepting of autistic people. And in, instead of that, autistic people did have this faith discrimination in the workplace, school, but due to lack of understanding of autism and that why we, their parents had to fight hard for them or even autistic people that they said had to fight hard to get accommodation and be accepted because people still not knowing about autism and then what makes it bad that there are people who don't know autism keep spreading misinformation about autism and that make it worse and even though people who from religion background or some don't even know that doing it for clouds is it spreading more information and even sometimes us autistic people can can spread misinformation and say and assuming that Everybody in the autism community is the same. And that when things go left real quick, even though we put spread awareness, but then we sometimes we contribute to and not realize not everybody is like us. Yes, we might have the same disability, but how we view things gonna be different. We don't have the same interest. We don't have the same what we want in life. It's gonna be different. So we need to, have to be careful what we put out in the world and also same with doctors even though they do research on earth and sometimes especially in the medical field there's a whole lot of bigotry we're going rampant in the medical field whether do it waste or sex or it could be a lead to why some good people in our community that why there'd be waste disparity gender disparity sexual identity disparity wherever because i think for this for awareness mom and even Every year, people need to unlearn their biases to understand how everybody's life is different from one another so we could just master this system so we don't keep this hierarchy in the artist community. Not just the artist community, but actually the disability space too because we cannot continue to have this super level of what a disability or autism is. They're not down with addressing the issue, especially with intersectionality issue in particular because it seems like most spaces most overwhelmingly whitewash. And that why so many people feel on her, and that why trying to spread awareness by using hashtag white because it's a, the narrative is keep showing the same thing over again, and nothing being heard, and and that way see me people creating their own spaces like nonprofit to serve a super good people in the art to the community because no one talking about them. And what do you think of the things that people don't know about autism like they said no? autism with misinformation you've heard this a thousand times vaccine called autism it had been debunked but still the people people out there don't know jack about autism then they talk about autism ruin your family life because autism could take away your child which is nuts or they use religion to think they could take away autism way that you have to pray over it which is wild I've seen a lot of that, especially some religious group, some people from, based some Christianity, but I don't know about other form of religion, pray over your disability that, that you could overcome it, which is never again. There's so many stereotypes about autism don't make no sense, that autism is, we don't have empathy or sympathy, or we unhuman. We strange and also that we more likely be a suitor in some nonsense. It's so many wild, misguided misinformation about autism. I can't keep track of even stereotypes like, oh, you good in math. I know it's like I'm a college student, I graduated in May, and I know if you try to look for like an internship or a job, especially if they have an event for autistic people, they always sold like STEM jobs. I'm like, I'm a county finance major. What if I want them jobs? And that's why I don't go to them. And so I look at the company. What about those who have major in political science or history or in biology? You can't assume that every autistic person is good with must be in the STEM program. Some of it does, but don't assume every autistic person does because it puts it in disadvantage in the workplace and in school. 
because they lack of awareness and accommodation and, and not mean to know about autism so they make assumptions that based on what they hear on TV and stuff and which that make it worse. Then people who don't know about autism make it worse. And especially in the workplace, I know it's especially a lot. Sometimes the parents think, you're not my child. Yes, you are correct. I'm not your child. Yes, we might have the same disability, but you and that your child and I are going to be two different people. We're not the same. How I display my disability might be different from your child or your someone you know who have autism. It's going to be different. We're not the same. I think that where people lump autistic people being the same. No, we have the same disability, but we're not the same people. Sometimes us autistic people fall that trap as well. How would you define autism? Especially what I know is a no development disorder that uh, impacts somebody with social skills, how they see things in the world. Let's say you're not a, you don't have the same brain as somebody else, as a non autistic person does. You just see things different. And yes, you may be behind something. You might be be overstimulated. And especially with Adam relying to force sensory issue, like a normal person can't handle while a with the same person or our autistic person cannot handle it. They had we we had to be accommodated. Yes, we could function as long as there's some accommodation to our need where I'll be overwhelming that we lead to burnout and meltdown and stuff. But some of us might be sensitive to sound, to cut to it like it basically would impact our senses. What we see, feel is different. But of course our brains are gonna be different. That's how I think about autism. If you could set the narrative of what autism and awareness for months could be about on acceptance months, what are the things that you feel the community are and people need to be focused on? What they need to focus on? Oh, gosh. What definitely people need to work on? Finding, oh, man. Of course, they need to understand what autism is, but to unlearn their ableism. And unlearn what they think of what autism is because it's, they can't, people make something about autism before they meet an autistic person. And sometimes some people say you meet with one autistic person, you meet with autistic person. But sometimes that person perceives about one autistic person, they think they're going to be the same to the next autistic person, which is not the case. And we did not unlearn that. And also having the parents of autistic autistic children or adults to unlearn their bodies and what they think they know to unlearn and also help their child grow up without having all their ableism and stuff and that need to work on and also of course talk about intersectionality how different community within the autistic community experiences and also make sure that autistic people have the resource they need to for their for their life going to school or whether they get a job or why some of us might need high support need have care caregiver make sure that they help us with their idea with children and make sure the system that wherever government that we live in that is accessible to us so we don't have to work food and have to pull our disability which is freaking wild it yeah. is it's it's like understanding us and accept us as we are and not trying to, to change us and yes art to the is a genetic and not what called whatever it's they don't people need to know it's genetic and not a vaccine bs or whatever because that need to be said we need more perspective and also with the media and tv stuff like that even research they need to clue different perspective because not every autistic person is the same they need Make sure they research and also hire artistic people to talk about the experience they're assuming from the from a parent perspective. Yeah, I think that's a good point because when you're talking about the different uh, perspectives of autistic people, it's something that I have noticed myself with autism awareness and acceptance months because I think sometimes with these months, it's like what is at the forefront. It's what's more palatable or expect, uh, acceptable for when more than the typical audience to see autism as and what, and you get the more what people uh, feel bit more comfortable with seeing the more privileged they are, the lowest board needs not, and all it's not focusing on 
some of the bigger issues at play with areas of injustice within the community. And it's a good point you picked up a bot on about hiring people of different perspectives because when you think about it, a lot of people are hired to do with really speak to companies or where other places are often off low support needs and off right people and off new genders and so that's definitely an issue there with that and I guess it's, it's even a thing of after a social media where the social media could be a place where there's a bit more chance for equality but it's, you, you can't you probably find that your content doesn't reach the audience as and they were divergent person who is a right person. Yeah, it's definitely we need more perspective. Yes, we need parents of autistic, autistic children to talk about the experience. Of course, doctor and professor, yeah. of course, their voice not even heard too. But the, what they tend to be left out is the autistic people they sell. And that what they go wrong. And they need to listen to autistic person perspective. They cannot be, of course, they need parents or autistic children because that they they voice matter. If you want to serve the autistic community, you have to talk to us directly and interact. But sadly, some people like we not the expert, but we live through it 24-7. Yeah. You need our perspective. You don't, you be harming the community that you're supposed to be helping. Yet I know that some people who are trying to help autistic people with their life and stuff, but sometimes with their unlearned bias about autism or what happened to internalized ableism, they might put autistic people at risk without not working on it, whether it be ABA, even though they think they happen them, happen to us, but all the time they not. Because due to the side that we live in, you had to blend in. Of course, we live in a capitalist side that you had to work. And some of us, that why you see some artists be, be unemployed because we do want to work or some, of course, not all of us are yeah. low support. Some of us high support need may not work and they need caregivers to help them out. Or And for those who is low support need, do go do go to job and stuff like that, but then they get burned out because the job is not accessible to them. And that's why all the, the people who working in in HR or whatever, not understand about autism and, and not understand how to, and because of them side, they assume that you are normal or non-autistic person. And that went, that went thing on go left with quit because that how autistic people be underemployed and underappreciated. And also, they need to see autistic people as human beings and not subhuman. They keep forgetting that we are human beings with feelings. That like, oh, they can't understand you. If you read that person or you teach that person, they go hear you what you say. If you say bad thing around that, they go, we go observe what you say about us. And that's why many of us have been trying to like table because we hear what we heard about our disability. Like you talk about us, not to us. And people keep forgetting that we are human beings too. That's what they need to work on. We are human beings with feelings. And our voice matters. And of course, we, many of us have many trauma for our experience for being autistic in the world that don't accept us. I said when you know, like people don't understand autistic people, some, sometimes as, like that can be down to having communication differences where that people do not always give the pace and some time to listen to an autistic person speak or communicate and however they communicate and be able to give the resources to them. And as somebody who yourself who has worked in advocacy and activism, what's it been like speaking to other new divergent people within the community or to other you or know, to people who are like parents or like teachers of new people? What's your experience of communicating with uh, for people and using your platform uh, to discuss these things. Especially with how we communicate, it, it going to be different for those who are not to say. It's like I know that sometimes we can't be direct with our sponsor and sometimes they take it like, oh, you being mean or being rude. But you ask us a question and we answer you like, honestly, we're not being rude enough. We just have our brain words. Or it could be the per it could be the person who we are, how we operate. 
that sometimes people get wrong that we're being wooed or be mean, but you get if you ask her, we're gonna tell you. But I think people and also they need to understand how we communicate. Yes, artistic person go be different from one artistic person. So you gotta figure out our communicating style so we so we don't make things. So you had to be clear with your communication with us and your dog will go be look like confused and stuff like well, you said it talked to you before you spoken to people who work in your college and if that's your peers, fellow students, to your teachers and staff in the college, as well as pe- speaking to pe- parents and neurodivergent pe- people. What has that experience been like talking to people about experience autism? This is where, where I, especially when it comes to communication, but sometimes I can't take things literal. If they don't explain the way that I understand it, and I get myself frustrated because it's sometimes non autistic people do not explain the way that, that we can understand things. And this where there'd be miscommunication. And also, it could be the person not understanding like how we operate. It could be like they misunderstood that they don't include it in, in their friend group because they think we weird and we think we this, that, we strain, we don't have the same interest as them because even my own personal life, Yes, I don't have many friends. It seems like I relate to no distinct people or people with disability or today people in general because with non-autistic people, they don't know what it's like to have a disability every day. And I could relate to those who have disability than those who not. And I felt they couldn't stand what it's like more than not than non-today people. With non-today people, like, they go think we strain and stuff like that and they not willing to do the work to understand our disability, not not willing to understand us as an individual. So they make assumption that you have this disability, I'm gonna stay away from you. Or they're not willing to understand. They put their perspective of what someone they know who have that particular disability, they lump that into your finger, gonna be the same thing that need to be changed. How do you start into speaking to people? Like I said about you spoken to people within your college about autism and the different fairness stuff within your college space uh, as well as speaking to parents also you've been able to do stuff online where about activism and advocacy how did you start with all that yeah it made me think about back in my community college i started my education at a community college and i did two events about autism and of course i bring two people who work with autistic people. And, and of course, I had you myself as an autistic person talk about what like to be me, right? We need that perspective, which I did not know until I came out and learned about the disability community and, and learned that they don't include disabled people in conversation or even the type of event or disability advocacy work. So I decided to include myself to talk about what like to be me, what like be autistic, what need to be changed. And... Some people do ask questions because because not everybody know about autism. They, they some people would join, but not many because of course a lack of awareness, or they do want to learn about autism if whether it be a teacher, or parent, or whatever, to help that person they raising or helping who are autistic to understand. I hope people are listening to what I have to say and, and other autistic um, advocate to listen to what we said and take it to the heart and make them change it. But I felt like they do hear what, but they, I don't know. I make an assumption. Hope they take our, our experience and take away with it and make some changes. But up to there, they want to make a change. But you can't change people. Yeah. And from, like, when you've been speaking to parents and, like, people in the community college, what are the questions they ask to you? And, you know, as you're saying that, you feel that people's lack, lack of education because of misinformation. Is that some feedback that you got from, from them? So what is the feedback and the questions you had from people? Like, I remember, like, when I first became an activist about a mom who is asking questions, basic thing about asking questions like, how to, how to support my child? It asks a question like, dang. Ask a question about about the child. Ask some questions like how to support my child, especially for the parent. 
how to support my child, what about autism, and talk about that. And so today, talk about the experience with that child. And I tell them, like, you know your child more than me. And I will always tell parents, treat them like they they every other child. They're human being too. Yes, yeah. they have a disability, but treat them like they like every other kid. Yeah, I think that's an important thing to learn because I have had the sense that some of our autistic advocate people on social media have not always had the same message to give across. And I think that is the most important thing to say because, as you in play, every child is different and no autistic person's the same. As I said, treat them like, in a way, like ev- everyone else, but also it's like making so you learn and understand about your child and how they are. What has advice you give in that sense? Was it influenced by your own childhood and the parenting that you had as a child yourself? Um, no, I'm not a parent, but... Because maybe because it's very important for parents to see yes, see somebody who look like them, who have a disability, they could do things on their own. But I'll be telling them help your child like whether it be using or just finding resources to help them to help their autistic child or even themselves to understand about autism. It's very important for especially for parent to to get get some resources because I know a lot of time some parent may get some resources but that not misguided. And sometimes they may not go directly to out to the people they said they go directly to the professional or the other parents, but not so much about the autistic experience. But of course, there are some parents not go listen to autistic people because we're not the expert on their child. And yes, you are correct. We're not the expert on your child, but at the same time, like we could understand something. Yeah. We might help you out to understand yeah. so you don't so you so they don't create no. So they don't create harm to their own child, what have they done to us. We don't repeat the pattern again. Yeah. And what was your like, own experience like of them being parented? Is there things from when you were being parented by your parents? Is there like things that influence that your own autism advocacy and then, you know, give advice to other parents of what you learned from your own childhood? Especially from my childhood, I know from my parents, they did the best of their ability to understand me. Of course, they use some outdated term, the functioning level. And yeah. sometimes, even though they do have faith in their own children, but sometimes my parents put me in a box sometimes based on my disability and stereotype associated with autism. And yes, like sometimes they have some in, in a lot of ableism that like they don't want me. They do want me to exceed, but some, sometimes they hold me back a little bit because they scare. Because like they sometimes, Kayla, can you do that on your own? Take care of yourself. Because they worry because you live in a world that people just mean. People just assholes in general. And with my take advantage of me because I'm autistic. I know I can't change the reality. Yes. But of course, of course, like every parent, they scare. Like, so mm-hmm. I didn't understand that at first, but of course, maybe it has some ableism. And then, of course, sometimes use the religion. Like, you could overcome autism. Autism do not define you. Would they correct? But sometimes they don't know the extent of how my disability can affect my day to day life. What if I be burnt out, exhausted? may not function. What if my routine go off? It could be a little thing, my routine be off and I'm like, fuck it. But I know sometimes they change my routine a little bit or life in general. So they don't understand like how specific routine help me to keep myself sane. Of course, like they not perfect. They human being. But I'm I think they do I think they're doing better than let me be me. Mm-hmm. Maybe I was younger because, of course, they want to protect their child. But now I'm a dog now. Yeah. they like, okay, you grown now. Do you think that sometimes when you're able to give advice to parents, it's, do you feel that you kind of give the advice that you wish your parents had from other people? If, when you were diagnosed, do you think that you're able now to at least understand things you, you wish your parents could understand at the time when you, you were diagnosed and you were growing up? But they might be not had 
in for me to let them to my parents right now maybe don't over push your autistic child to the limit do not push your child to the limit that yes don't let autism define me you're correct but don't over limit your child to the limit that that could lead them to burn out what happened to me so don't be hard on your child don't make your child over exceed they need fair will like yes we have limits too because some of this beer can impair you to do certain things and sometimes which my parent could understand like some i had limit and something they want me to overachieve that limit to be like a super super disabled person super artistic person i'm not that i got limits i wish they could learn that i have limits yeah oh so i guess it's some it's something that burnout has it's been something you experienced and what has that experience of Burnout been for yourself and helped you for experience an artistic burnout. I'll be honest with you, I don't even know. I go with the wind because all my life I had to fight. So sometimes I don't even know what my limit is, if I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I over push myself because due to internalized ableism. And I think like I may put myself over the limit and not realize I'm going to the limit until I know it's like I don't do jack for days. Or when I want to do something, but for some reason I don't want to do nothing because I realize it's like, I don't want to do jack. Or you could be a mental breakdown while we're knowing it. I'm just trying to learn that through therapy. I maybe could do the fact, back, think back on it because I think due to my internalized ableism, I think I try to be like perfectionist at everything that would led me to my burnout. And I try not to leave myself to burn out, but knowing me, I put myself on the limits trying to do multiple things one time and learn not to say yes to everything. I still need to work on that one. But maybe what I should have done is like pay attention to my body or how I react to certain things. If I find myself zoning off, then I think that when I need to step back a little bit and Take care of myself because I really don't check care of myself like I'm supposed to. So I had to remind myself of that. It's a work in progress. If black thing is, I think, being autistic, you know, it's always like a work in progress because you always, as humans, and we learn a lot more about themselves and that you're always learning different things about yourself because over time you change and it's that thing where you have to learn a bit more about burn out as you age because like now we're guess can no now start to look at where you might not notice the signs before because it's something that if you are going through burnout I think it's hard then to notice the signs of it because can they start to dissociate and start to not recognize what sensory things are you would be as the signs of burnout because you kind of not put sense in your senses. Not thinking straight or probably dis delusioning a little bit because I think I find myself doing it or I just I just don't do jack or I just play my video game, play my app game or do something on social media for hours because I could be mentally exhausted while even knowing that I'm exhausted. So I had to explain to myself like it's okay that you feel this way. It's okay that you don't have the same energy all the time. When sometimes I definitely have to be kind to myself and probably every autistic person, we're not non-autistic people. We have to pace ourselves, what our limits are. We got to figure out what our limits are so we don't burn ourselves out or lead to burnout in no time. It's like self optimization to know yourself, to know when you know you're about to experience burnout or mental breakdown you just know yeah and what like like for autistic people things that can help maybe sometimes prevent burnout or at least help us for like some the experience of fatigue that we might have so what are the accommodations or what accommodations and adjustments do you need as an autistic person and as part of how autism can be quite disabling what are the things that you need and some the more things that other people may need and make be good things to consider as 
a comedy sense. I will say this. Every artistic person is different. Like for me, I like music. It's had me feel calm. I feel relaxed. Or if I could dance a little bit to the music, that would help me, keep me sane. It may be different to other artists' presence. Maybe they, they like their STEM toy. Oh, yeah, so that had a little, like, STEM toy. It's still like that. I had that if I want to play with it. It's a different thing for different people. Maybe for them, they like to take a walk. Maybe they like listen to music like I do. Or it could talk to their friend. Some of those, that, some are introverted, extroverted, or in the middle. It, we different. So we had to, I would say, figure out what work for you, how you like to operate. It only could help by how to accommodate yourself. That I would say, know yourself first. You know how you operate. That I would say to every autistic person. Know you. Know how you operate. And when you were seeing the book, like how music helps you, what type of music do you enjoy and listen to when you need to stimulate, release energy or relax as you what the music you enjoy then? The type of music I listen to is most R and B and hip hop. That's the most I listen to. But sometimes I listen to other genres of music. But I know sometimes I listen to Latin music or like Arabic music. Or it depends on my mood. Maybe like something I might listen to like international music sometimes. It depends on my mood. Or I could sing. And I said I use music. So that I play my headphone. Play my music from this app that I'll be using to listen to music. And have my headphone everywhere I go. Where I could eat. Where I eat my dinner. Or even taking a shower so that I have a speaker. My mom be like, oh, okay, I'm moody. I'm mm -hmm. in a good mood. Yeah. And so, was yeah. it, what are your favorite uh, songs or artists are you enjoying at the minute? Oh, man. I like too many artists, but I feel right now, it, like, it's very different. Mine kind of read them. But I think most of the type of music I like, like Janelle Monet, different, different yeah. artists I like, depending they, they style, thing like yeah. that. Yeah, you do Janelle Monet. And, yeah, and also with decent the things that in school and in college with police and stuff, things that might help you more practically in day-to-day -day life that also would class as accommodations, or the things that might help you in, in the or when you're studying. Oh, yeah, especially where I study. I'm most like a visual person, so I read a book or wherever I look at my notes. But especially for my accommodation for my class, if they become an exam and quizzes, I get like an extended time. And it kind of be like that since I remember from middle school, I get extended time on my exam or in quizzes. And I don't know how that work in the workplace, but it probably not. You had to figure that out, but I just got to figure that out. As you said to earlier on that, sometimes it can be quite hard to turn the mask on that say that some might not be... You know, uh, I feel as if I'm comfortable to do uh, like certain dancing or you know singing. So, are you involved in any like dance places where you like? I see it must be hobby for yourself. Do you do any like dance classes or go to, or do any singing things? Is it something or is it just like something you just enjoying in your a free time really when you at home or wherever? I used to exercise growing up, but I stopped until I had my job and stuff. That kind of stopped me. But but for me, if I would go back to, back again, maybe exercise, maybe go to the gym. If I have the money, then I might do that. Or and what other stuff bring me joy? Of course, I like to dance. I also play my games. I used to play video games all the time growing up, but I stopped. But now it's just app games. <laughs> I spend all my money there. But yeah, yeah, just majority of the time. Also, I do karaoke sometimes. But if my peep, if my family decide, oh, we're gonna do karaoke, and I, we don't do it every time. But if we do, yeah. no problem. Yeah, and but the things I've been asked you about is how you started the black autistic pride and you always have stars within the black autistic community. Do you want to start a are you about? Hashtag and create that, that online community and what was like before that and how do you see a need for 
creating that hashtag. Do you think that uh, before there was a much of a community online for black autistic people? Before I created a hair tag, before that, I would just live my normal life in a core at the time. Before I came an activist phrase, I just live my life, of course, with my internalized ableism, and of course, graduating from high school back in 2015. Yeah, I'm older. But trying to live my life. Then, of course, one day I exposed myself to the artist community and the disability community online, learn about disability rights and talk about would like to have a disability or being autistic in general. And that when I learned about disability and I also spread awareness about autism. And what led me to this, like, I guess somebody in the disability community talk about intersectionality. And I'm like, what is that? And that when I learned about intersectionality, it's mostly about how one idea did impact another. And I thought I'd do some research because I had did some research about autism and gender or autism and girls way before back in my musical high school year. I do, did a lot of research on that one. But I did not know, like, when I thought I looked up autism and race, and I realized it's the same issue with regarding gender. The lack of just a lot of disparity when it comes to get diagnosed because lack of cultural awareness and lack of how people operate. And I think also, you know, what led me to, like, in Doing 2018, when Autism Awareness Month, I tried to figure out that. And then when I got created, which was originally Autistic Black Pride, to talk about what it's like to be me, se- celebrate being Black and Autistic, because you see the hat to like Autistic Pride or Black Pride. And I decided, I could do both. And we died. Create the hashtag because they, I did not know they like there's some despair when it comes to autism, but when it comes to race, and that's why I create the hashtag. Yeah, and what was things be, as you've been using now? How has you, you what was it? Has it hang on, it's gonna take me words. What has it been like seeing other people use the hashtag or if other people use the hashtag? What things have people posted about? And have you been able to meet other autistic people online and make other connections just by creating that hashtag? Yeah, maybe just when I create that hashtag, it would help like black autistic people talk about what it's like to be them or being proud for being an autistic pride. Just like autistic pride being proud for, of who you are, bracing your bring yourself for being autistic and also bracing yourself being black. And also talk about some issue with to be black disabled person. Of course, there's some people don't like to have it because they think like I'm dividing up the community by race or color, which is what petty. But forget them people. I created for black autistic people. But and of course there's some parents of autistic or black autistic children could use a hair test. At first I don't know how the story first, but anyone who knows someone who have who black and then autistic to spread awareness like share your pride because we need that awareness like and also get to, and also use the hashtag to find the other black autistic people out there and follow each other or maybe have other people who not white just follow though who who black and autistic with even the content you've been making recently then you can reflect so the more of the general autistic spaces as as quite isn't as inclusive as to black people or that might be an understatement. But as you said that you find that you know with that autism fight, autism acceptance gets right to us. And so how does how would you like I know that is something you said already on social media, but what does that right to us look like on autism acceptance month and it beyond that, what is that? What are the things they see at a very trust within the community? What do you mean it need to be done in the, in the artist community, whether it be the parents or the artist people they sell? They cannot, those who have privilege, they cannot be the only one talking about it. And also, which is to create image and that narrative that you had to be this particular look to be artistic. And sometimes the autism have been whitewashed for so long that by parents or IT people who have privileges. And sometimes 
salad. People look up to them in social media and research stuff like that. They think they are the default of what autism is and leave out those who not them. And I think that never need to change because that never fucks on the white, white autistic person perspective or the white autism parent perspective more. And that need to change because how are you supposed to say you for everybody and you're not for everybody? That need to be changed. You can't say you're for all autistic people and or for all autism community that you're not working your biasy and not dismissing the system within the community and not addressing the intersectionality issue. And yeah, and that way some people are like, why you bring up race? Why you bring up gender or whatever? Why people like me have to create spaces to address the issue which y'all not going to address? So don't blame us for why creating spaces that you don't want to work on. Maybe we won't have this kind of hashtag like the Black Autistic Pride to address the specific issue that relate to that. People sadly, autistic community, it continues to be whitewashed to this day, and that needs to change. But you can't make all people they don't want to do. I think that's um, a frustrating place as if you're wanting to see this change happen. But as you said, that multiple times that this isn't some that this is something that it can happen that you want to see change happen, but people not willing to make her change themselves or open to listen to and I think this is the problems that are going on in the Finnish community and what's making it harder for things to progress as you see that or the autistic community and anything to do with autism, acceptance and awareness should include everybody by race and gender and as it's something that people can be excluded by and you won't get autism acceptance properly if you don't include those of minority races or minority genders and that's really the point that I know you're trying to highlight and raise really when you do your content highlighting the right to autism and it's just sometimes to make progress I think it's kind of a difficult conversation and you got to wake up a bit to some uncomfortable information yeah, especially with autism, definitely be changed due to the narrative around autism. The image needs to be changed because it cannot be continued for decades. When on TV stuff, that needs to be changed. Like people had to bring different perspectives, need to be changed because I'm sick of tired of seeing them. Yes, of course, of course, their voice matter, but they can't be the only one autism. And that would need to be changed. And we need to address the image problem within the autism community so we could continue as a community, but of course. And also addressing the ableism and, and for autistic people, the trauma relating to being autistic. And also, with a result of tone police and other autistic people, what autism is. We, we need to address that issue. I've been seeing that a lot by other autistic people, especially with those who love support me. Police and other autistic people, which is this is something that they definitely seen happen, and that's, I think that's sometimes you not know, like I think people don't see people who have a bit less privileged or who can see where there's the bigger platforms, there's a more privileged within the community. They may not be making a right statement, and I think that's the thing is when you like mention something, it's just like holding accountability and. Well, you just want people to be able to acknowledge and learn from things. You know, you're saying about what change needs to happen. Do you, how do you think change will, could happen? Or how do you think it will happen? And how confident are you Alan, about change happening? If I'll be honest with you, it's better what we at. It's not going at Why not? It's not happening because that narrative is still the same. People now working their biases. It might take some decades until we could be be more inclusive and more be involved in intersectional activism. But right now, you're not seeing it because right now it's being whitewashed. And it's going to take probably a decade, maybe two or three decades. I don't know. I don't know when that going to change when I get older. But I don't know it's going to take a while because right now, what you're seeing, 
people that have their own kind of spaces for now relating to a specific identity, like you said, with nonprofit, like like autism black, which I'll be presenting at a conference this weekend, which is mostly for the black community to understand autism. And but everybody could join to understand the black side of autism because not everybody had the same resources because due to how, especially in the United States particular, there's a lot of disparity. Yeah, that way you see so many spaces like autism women and non-baby network, which except for autism women and LGBTQ plus people, while uh, autism black, it'd be for, for the black community to understand autism, spreading awareness, and other group as well, talk about different issues within the autism community. So my goal will be like that until people who had the most privilege to change their ways and work at their biases, but right now they ain't doing it. Do you want to say, say there'll be more about this conference, conference even you got coming up this weekend? Yeah, it's Austin and Black Conference. It's a virtual conference. So it could be different speaker from professional activists and things like that, talk about bring research to the, for the Black community, best for parents, autism people, et cetera, or anybody who want to learn about the Black side of autism. So for me, I'll be presenting the, the Black Autism Experience because a lot of time they always saw the white autistic experience instead of someone would like to be black and autistic. So I'm gonna talk about that in my presentation. What are the things these things you might want people to read, watch, follow, or look at if they want to find more about those intersectional voices within a uh, black autistic community? Any resources that you think people should check out if they want to learn more? It's a lot. But I know autism women, non baby network, even though this fucks on women and LGBTQ plus people, but they do have a autistic people of color fund, which is how black and brown autistic people with resources, if they need help pay with a bill, thing like that, they could use that. Or they could follow black and brown autistic people or any of most like autistic people to follow to learn about their experience. Learn about that, or you can follow. I also get some books too, and I and do you, and I, you would recommend right well, now. I got this book called Autistic and Black Experience. I think that was it called, but I can't remember. But let me check. I think called up. Bear with me. I'm just trying to think the name. I'll tell you in a minute. I think it's called Autism and Black Experience. I think that's the name. I ain't got stalling, but by the way, in a minute, when I have time for yeah. what for this homework, but it's, I gotta find the name, gotta find the name, gotta find the name, gotta find the name. No, I'm trying to look on my link in. Oh, Lord. This is bad. I think they call Alton a black experience, but let me check. Be on the safe side. I think that was the name called. Well, now, send me an email to off any free resources or those books you would recommend and just to list of them. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Autism in Black book. Mm hmm And... In Black. Yeah. And they got a podcast, too, if you want to learn about. The book called... I'm reading it right now. I'm thinking about Autism in Black, Our Experiences of Growth, Progress, and Empowerment. The author is... Yeah. Kayla Allen Omosa. I can't say that. Um, yeah. I'm going to it down. I'll, re I'll look it up anyway, yeah. thanks for that, and is there any, like, uh, things, anything else you want to say that I haven't got a chance to say already on this, this interview? I would say for this month and even after Autism Awareness, except I'm on, listen to more like autistic people. We need more perspective, and also follow Black autistic people or any most Black people. Whether it be the book about what it like to be them, maybe the movie, maybe TV show, or even the documentary, anything. Just listen to us and even clue us in podcasts or in conference. What I'm doing right now, or even go autism in black, which is funded by a black autistic woman. Ain't that funny, way? And other, if you are parents of autistic children, if you write black, the, the color of autism, I figure the nonprofit. It's so many out there. I just can't keep track of. Oh, and for black and brown autistic people, go to Autistic People Color Fund. As I said, if you 
any other resources you want me to direct people to or recommend that to them as well. And so as well, do you want to also say any like your own social media? You want to say where uh, people can you find and follow you or any other things you want to promote? Oh yeah, I got so many names. Okay, well, Instagram, it is Black Artista Kayla. And I think it's Black Artista Kayla on Instagram, TikTok, and Thread, and also for Twitter Now X, which is Kayla being me. And also, I failed to mention that I have a community on Javiba app, which is called Noah Diversity in Black which everything will be in my link tree or my social media, thing like that. They could go from there. And if, and also to let everybody know, if you want to join my community on Javiva, you have to walk on your body and decolonize your mind because I don't play that. Thanks again for Keila Smith for coming on the podcast. Thanks again for listening.